Hello, yes. In my previous videos on Game of Thrones, the initially popular HBO series about incest, dragons, and rapidly aging children, I covered the accents of the North and the Stormlands. Now for the third part, You going to do all seven of the fuckers? It's time for the Westerlands. Based mostly on Southern England, culturally if not geographically, so we'll just go with posh sounding English off the bat. I'm sure you'll tell me how wrong I am in the comments, and that is of course you're right. Up first is of course the Lannisters, and we'll start from the top, Lord Tywin himself. Now he might have problems pronouncing Tyrell correctly. The Tyrells are a problem. The Tyrells helped us defeat Stannis Baratheon. But as cold posh authority goes, he has the accent licked. Not that big a stretch for Charles Dance, you might argue, but honestly, who could be better cast as Tywin? Who else could add dignity to getting killed on the shitter? Jamie starts off a bit wonky. His voice veers into the actor's Danish accent a good amount during the first few seasons. Let me thank you ahead of time. You're guarding us all from the perils beyond the wall. Wildlings and white walkers and whatnot. But by the end, he sounds more or less like a posh upper class type. So, fair play. You don't need a king. Any knight can make another knight. I'll prove it. Cersei sounds just as highborn and evil as any Disney villain. Yeah. I wanted to see your face. They said you'd lost your nose, but it's not as gruesome as all that. Even when she's angry, she maintains the RP accent. Take him! Take him! Take him! Take him! Tyrion. Now, there's no nice way of putting this, but Tyrion's accent is fucking awful. I have a gift for you. Give that to your saddler. He'll provide the rest. You must shape the horse to the rider. Start with a yearling and teach it to respond to the reins and to the boy's voice. I don't remember him sounding this terrible when he was in Narnia. You get treated like a dumb animal long enough. That's what you become. You may find Narnia a more savage place than you remember. In scenes such as this one with Janos Slint, he does a competent job. Are you drunk? Not have my honour questioned by an imp? I'm not questioning your honour, Lord Janus. I'm denying its existence. But anything requiring emotion, he might as well be yelling to get served at a New Jersey bar. Archers! There are too many. Hound form a welcome party for any Baratheon troop that manages to touch solid ground. I'm not going to include Joffrey, Marcella and Tommen here as they were born in King's Landing, so that will be another video. But there are still plenty of Lannisters to go around. They breed like incestuous rabbits. That should be on their coat of arms instead of the lions. Uncle Kevin, sorry Kevan, has a decent sounding upper class English accent, with some gravitas for the scenes where he has to tell off Cersei. I return to the capital to pay my respects to my brother, and to you, and to serve the king. I did not return to the capital to serve as your puppet, to watch you stack the small council with sycophants. Lancel Lannister has a nicely observed Weasley posh voice, which is perfect for a character that beds his cousin and murders a king for her. Her Grace the Queen Regent commands you to release Grand Maester Pycelle. Is your warrant? Willem and Tommen, I mean Martin Lannister, didn't have an easy time of it. First they get told they're going to get eaten by Rob. And he eats the flesh of his enemies. Then they get stabbed up by an enraged hobo Santa. But they did sound the part while alive. It's Willem. Is this a rescue? Alton Lannister had the opportunity to simp directly at Jaime while they shared a cage together before having the honour of being murdered by him. His accent slips into Northern at times. I guess his brief conversations with Rob rubbed off on him. You'll get the Starks our reply, cousin. I will, Your Christ. Did you see my brother when you were the Starks' guest? I did. They have not broken his spirit, Your Grace. The Cleganes now, and oh dear. Sander is full-on Scottish. 
he might as well be wearing a kilt and asking for iron brew instead of wine. Look at me. Stannis is a killer. The Lannisters are killers. Your father was a killer. Your brother is a killer. Your sons will be killers someday. I'm not sure if he had a gap year up north or beyond the wall before he joined the Lannisters' service, but it doesn't fit where he grew up. Gregor? Well, which one? The first Gregor Clegane only got one line, and sounded Southern Englishy, I guess. The second, also known as the toothpick that rides, had the voice down at least. I want them dead, every one. Killing them isn't the problem. It's finding them. You gone soft, Clegane? The third was Icelandic, and while it may have been amusing to hear him say the dialogue, he was sensibly dubbed over by someone who sounded pretty much like the first guy, so a win, I guess. Elia Martel! I've killed her children! Then I raped her! Then I smashed her head! In like this! The Tickler, that nice chap who tortures imbecilic peasants, comes equipped with. well, it's definitely an accent. Where is the Brotherhood? I don't know, please. Where is the Brotherhood? I don't know. <laughs> Anyone? Cornish? Irish? Pirate? Fuck those. Polliver, when he runs his A cunt mouth, speaks with what starts as an East End sounding accent before lapsing into whatever this is supposed to be. He's good, the mountain is. Best at what he does, but. Torture, 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 torture. You spend enough time putting the hammer to people, you start to feel like a carpenter making chairs. Then he gurgles in an undefined tone. <laughs> Amory Lorch, the illiterate crow kebabber, speaks with a posh ish English accent, but on closer listen, there are traces of Irish. What might this be? Lord Tyrone gave it to me. What for? To take to the armory. Why would he do that? Ilin Payne. I just put him in as a joke. As we all know, he lost his tongue by going down on the Mad King's wife. Podrick Payne, the whore master. Everybody's least favourite puppy dog sidekick has a reasonable go at the southern accent, sported by most of the other Westerlanders, but the occasional Scottish sound can be heard. What exactly did you do for Lord Tyrion? Brought him his meals, cleared his table when he was finished, kept his clothing and linens clean, carried his messages and returned the replies. Mostly I poured wine. Cersei's childhood friend Milara Heatherspoon, which sounds like she should be teaching fucking potions or something at Hogwarts, has a generic child actor RP accent as most of the kids in the show tend to. Why not? If your father here. He'll never know we're gone. But if he finds out... Kudos to the girl that played young Cersei though, she nailed the mannerisms and the voice. They said that you were terrifying. With cat's teeth and three eyes. You're not terrifying. Maggie the Frog has a sort of bored malevolence that she conveys through a suitable voice and seems like she's around those parts. Everyone wants to know their future. Until they know their future. He's this Lannister soldier that gets his legs sawed off by Talisa sounds sort of middle England. No, don't! No, don't! Please, don't! We'll get better! It doesn't even hurt! Before the screams begin. It's better than my senior tongue, believe me. And lastly, we have these two Burks with their immersion breaking conversation where they play top trumps with famous Westerosi swordsmen. Right. The mountain. Our man Jamie. If he ever gets out. Loris Terrell. Loris Terrell. He's prettier than the Queen. I don't care about pretty. He's better with a sword than any of them. I guess they sound like they were born and grew up in the Westerlands. So, overall, another success for the show. So, I'm awarding the Westerlands. Six tickled ticklers out of seven. Please do subscribe and comment, it does help a lot. Until next time, bye then.